Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and I thought today I would share with you a background technique that I've been playing around with. For this back te background technique, I call it a gel medium texture resist, and all you need is some regular gel medium and a spatula and some medium some water soluble medium i have out right now uh, my distress spray stains uh, which are uh, water soluble but you could use distress inks um, you can use uh, acrylic paints that you've watered down or that are in fluid form now of course they work with water when they're wet when they dry they are permanent um, you can use your water soluble crayons um, so Essentially what the technique is, you take your substrate, whatever it might be, uh, here I use three tags, um, and I'm going to show you how, how it works on something larger in a moment, and you just spread your gel medium fairly thickly onto your substrate. Now you can see here I have a journal, and it has a dried layer of the gel matte medium on it. I just applied it with this spatula knife. You can use whatever you want. You put it on thick enough so you can draw designs in it. Now in this particular case, I just used this to do sort of a wavy, curly kind of swirly thing onto the top of this. And I have let this dry. Now, you can dry it with a, a heat tool, but I would recommend that you maybe at the beginning uh, use your heat tool tool for a few minutes and then set it aside and let it dry uh, by air because sometimes some um, gel mediums might bubble up when they hit heat. You want this to be thoroughly dry. You don't want it to be soft. You want it to be hard. Otherwise, what I'm going to show you uh, in a moment, you would wipe off some of the gel medium from your substrate. But just to go back to these little samples where I was experimenting, on this particular tag, I well on all three tags, I did what I just said. I spread the gel matte medium onto the tag and let it dry. And I made sure it was on thick enough that I could get some peaks and valleys in it. And I just ran the spatula through it at random just to give texture. I let it dry. And then on this particular one, I used, actually this one I'll start with, I used fluid acrylic paints. Now if you don't have fluid acrylic paints, you can use um, your regular acrylic paints, the type that come in the tubes or the little bottles, and just uh, add a little water to them to make them a little bit runny. Now you do this in layers. You lay down one color first, and all I did was I, I gently spritzed, missed it actually, water onto the surface of this tag on top of the gel medium, and then I just dropped some of the paint uh, from the end of a paintbrush and in the case of the fluid acrylics I could just drop it right from the bottle. I didn't put on very much and then I used a clean paper towel and I blotted that color. Now I only used one color at a time and between each color that I added I blotted and dried uh, the medium uh, with my heat tool. The reason I did that was I didn't want my colors to mix and turn to mud. So you're building layers up just like you would on an art journal page. With this one, I use the Jane Davenport Aqua Pastels, so I get a much lighter um, effect. But again, I did it in the same method. I only add it one color at a time. Uh, with her pastels, I just scribbled them onto a, a non-stick craft mat, spritzed them with a little water, and then using a paintbrush, I just loaded up the paintbrush and just dropped the color onto the card. Again, it helps if you miss your card or your tag or your substrate with a little water first. It allows your colors to um, run a little bit more. Again, dried between layers of color so that I wouldn't get mud. In this one's case, I use the Tim Holtz Distress Sprays, which I'm going to use uh, in a moment. And because these are already very fluid, I didn't really need to mist the card with any water. You could if you want it to run a little bit more. But again, one color at a time, dry each color before you add the next color. Or again, you have the danger of creating mud. And also between each layer, make sure you blot with a paper towel. 
So you get a really neat effect when you do this. So I'm going to do this on something a little larger. I'm going to do it on the cover of this, uh, what's going to become a new journal for uh, developing backgrounds. And I'm just going to use three Distress Sprays, Peacock Feather, Squeezed Lemonade, and Picked Raspberry. Now I've already applied my gel medium, and this is dry. This has had 24 hours to dry because this is really thick, and I wanted to make sure that it dries very well. I have put a piece of scrap paper below here, and you see that there's some remnants from some past projects on here. I don't throw this away. Over time, you get lots of interesting color and designs on this sheet of paper, and then I can cut it up and use it in an art journal. So you don't waste anything. So I'm going to grab this little plastic sheet just to protect the pages inside from overspray. I'm putting that down here. And I need some paper towels. So I'm just grabbing a, a roll of paper towels, just ordinary paper towels, have that handy. And away I go. Now this is a very quick method. And I'm going to start with my lightest color first. I don't know if that really matters, but that's the way I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to give it a little spritz. Now, I'm, I said before that because I'm using distress sprays, I don't really need to add any water, but I am going to add a little water to this just to get the color running. Now, you'll notice I did not cover the whole area, and that's okay. Now, I'm just lightly blotting. This is also moving some of the color around a little bit. And now I'm going to dry it. Now, because this might take a couple of minutes, because I want to thoroughly dry this, because I don't want my colors turning to mud when I add the next layer, I'm just going to pause the video and come back when I uh, add the second color. So now that my first color is pretty dry, um, I'm going to add my next color. My next color is Picked Raspberry. And you can see I'm not using all that much. I let it sit for just a second or two to sort of absorb into the substrate. And I'm just blotting. Now this time I don't think I'll bother to mist with any more water. I think I have it juicy enough. But we are going to give it a quick dry. Now you'll notice because these are water soluble products, the gel does act as a bit of a resist. If I was to rub this right now, I would be able to take some of the color off. But I don't want to do that at the moment. But the gel does help the ink, the spray ink, to sort of run on the surface as opposed to being immediately absorbed into it. Okay, let's add my third color, Peacock Feather. And again, just lightly blot up any puddles. And you can see here that I'm getting a very interesting looking texture and lots of different shades of light and dark and that's because of the various heights of the gel if that made sense now at this point you can decide whether you need to add more color and I do think I want to add a little bit more of the yellow so we'll just make sure things are reasonably dry here. And 
and we'll take our yellow. Now, of course, when yellow hits blue, it turns green. And I'm going to be daring here. I know I said don't do this because you'll get mud. But I think things are pretty much dry enough that I can add this to it. And OK. I'm just blotting up. And you can see here that in, I'll get a little white will peek through because that's the resist of the gel, which I think adds an interesting look. I'm not rubbing this, and I'm not trying. If I keep doing this, I'll remove an awful lot of the color. So you do this until you get it to the state you would like it in, and then dry. Now, if you do have some pooling in spots, just again, lightly blot as you dry. So I'm going to let this thoroughly dry, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to go up another notch. Okay, now that this is dry, I'm going to kick it up a notch by adding more texture. I have a lot of texture already, but more texture is even better. So this is another level that you can go. So what I've got here is just a piece of bubble wrap. And I have two colors of stays on ink, Jet Black and Claret. And I'm going to use these on the bubble wrap and use this like a stamp all over uh, this surface. Now the reason I'm using stays on ink is because I don't want to use a water soluble product or ink because this will act as a resist still to anything like that, the gel medium. So I want this to be more permanent. So I get out my jet black and I'm going to use both colors at the same time on this piece of bubble wrap. And I'm not being very particular about where I put it. And I'm going to push it down pretty good because there's a lot of bumps in this substrate. So we'll see what we get. And we got nothing. Well, isn't that interesting? So I thought we'd get something, but we didn't get anything. So I'll be right back. I'm not going to give up on this. Okay, now I am truly experimenting. I still have my bubble wrap. I have a an acrylic paint pen, a cheap one. And I'm just going to cover this generously and slap it down. Aha, I got stuff. This works. Okay, now you could use Posco um, acrylic paint pens. You could use any kind of paint pens. You could use acrylic paint. I'm just too lazy to get out my acrylic paints, so I had these handy, and I thought I'd use these. And I'm not being very careful about where I'm putting stuff. I'm just slapping it down. Just adding texture onto texture. Okay. Now when I get going on things like this, I can't stop. So I'm just going to give this a quick dry. Okay, now I did reach for my black acrylic marker, except the problem is I noticed there is no felt tip in this. I don't know where it's gone. This was brand new. I've never used it before. Is it inside the cap? Nope. It's just missing. 
And that one is now dud. So in the garbage it goes. I have a blue one. Now you're probably asking what these are. These are the Miniso Acrylic Painter. Now I have no idea how you say that. It says Miniso. Miniso. I don't know. Came from one of those Chinese Japanese stores that seem to be springing up these days that look like dollar stores, but thing they have a wide variety of different products. And these were cheap. You got three for $2.99 mix and match. So now they do say they're water based. But at this point, I don't think that's really going to be a problem for me. So I'm going to add a little blue. Do it the same way. Ooh, that's kind of nice. You can see I'm not really, I'm just giving it a little hit. Okay, dry that. Now, as I look at this, I do see that the acrylic paints are beating up a little bit. But, you know, I kind of like that look, so I'm not going to worry about that. And let's see, should I give it, try another color? Well, I got a little bit of this in here, so why not give it a little hit of this lavender? I want to work quickly because these dry fairly fast on the plastic. That one's not really showing up all that well, but it is there. And now I'm thinking, what else could I put on this just to build up another layer of color and texture? I would like to try adding a little bit of a stamped image, uh, something in abstract. I'm just thinking, what can I add it with? And I'm coming to the thought that probably acrylic paint would be my best. And I'm thinking, as opposed to a rubber stamp, maybe using a foam stamp. So let me go find some foam stamps and we'll give that a try. Okay, so I pulled out some fluid black uh, acrylic paint. This is the stuff that's really runny. And I've pulled out one of my Art Foamy stamps. This one's got kind of an abstract design. And I also got out the stamp buddy for it. This is a foam pad that you put your paint on. I'm going to brayer it in and it'll act like a stamp pad that I'll put this into. And I think I have a video from some time in the past where I showed you how to use these kind of foam stamps. They're a lot of fun. You don't need a lot of paint on this. And just take a brayer and work the paint into your pad. And I'll just roll some onto the stamp itself. it off on this sheet which someday might become part of an art project we take our stamp and we just press it firmly into the little foam pad 
And let's see what happens. Well, that's kind of cool. You can see a little goes a long way. Once I get started, I never know when to stop, but I think I should stop soon. Okay, that's good. So you can see, you can keep building uh, layers onto this and you get a really neat design. I think I'm going to stop there and I'm just going to dry this quickly. And I'll be right back. Now that my paint has thoroughly dried, I'm going to add one last touch. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I have these raised areas. And I want to bring them out a little bit more. So I got out my uh, wax, my um, gold wax. And I'm just going, it's a rub, so I'm just putting a little bit on my finger. And I'm just going to lightly go over the surface and let the gold be picked up by some of the raised areas. And I'm using my finger to sort of buff it in. I don't want it to be glaring. But it just adds another dimension. To this page, sort of like highlights. Again, this is something that once I get going, I never know when to stop. It has a little bit of shine as well. I think that's enough. So what you want to do next is take a dry cloth or paper towel, something that's lint free, and just buff. Now bring out the shine. And it also helps to take off some parts of it that you may have thought you put too much on. Again, it's because we're using the gel matte medium, it acts as a resist, so some of these areas will buff off, whereas others, it'll stay right onto it. Okay, I think that's all I need to do there. I now have a gold finger, but that's a movie. Okay, I am going to hit it just for a few seconds with the heat gun again. Although this is a wax, and when it dries, it's pretty much permanent. Okay. So, I am done. 
here it is. Nicely textured, some color, some images on it. Um, easy to do, fun to do. Now the last thing that I will do, but I'll do this after I say goodbye, is I'm just going to give it a light spray of a permanent fixative, um, a clear coating, just to protect what's on here. Um, because this is the cover of a larger journal, and I don't want this to, like it's going to get a lot of wear. So this will just help keep it from chipping away or, you know, whatever. So I hope you give this technique a try. It's a lot of fun. Just keep in mind that you want to make sure that your gel medium is thoroughly dry before you add any more products to the top of it. And always remember, one color at a time, layer, dry, layer, dry. Okay? So I hope you try it. I hope you enjoy it. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.